you are a high priest after the order of Melchizedek or Melech Sadiq, you are a high priest after that order who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up what? What does it say? He had offered up what? Prayer, Prayer to Philot and supplication with strong crying and tears to Yah that he was able to save him from death and was heard in that he feared Yah. Though he was a son, you're sure. Yet he learned the obedience, the Shanach, by the things which he suffered. And it says, and he grew to be a Tormin, a perfect, he grew to be perfect. He became the author of eternal salvation to all them that obey him. Only to those that obey him. Obey what the Torah commands us. And it says, uh, call of Yah a high Kohan after the order of Melech Sadiq, Melchizedek. Now he is the one that offer up the offerings for Yisra'ya. No one else. Not the Kohan. He is the Kohan that is established forever. He learned the obedience and the faithfulness of Yah through the things he suffered. And we are suffering immensely. We're suffering in our minds. We're suffering in our bodies. Because we're not faithful unto the Torah of Yah. We're not obedient unto the Torah. The Torah teaches us every aspect of life. Every concept of life is in the Torah. The laws of the Torah, they guide the principles of Yah in our lives, in our bosom. It makes us strong and we become warriors and we're bona fide to go up against the powers of darkness. And so he sent Yahshua out of this order that he may offer up and the offerings of our sin offerings uh, to make us clean. They, they will never be defiled even by the hands uh, of a priest as they would defile things. Uh, but not in this order, Yisra'ya. When we truly have the eduth, uh, the testimony of the power of Yahshua in us, uh, then truly only then can we lift up clean hands everywhere. Yeah. Our hands are full of blood, it's full of dam, it's full of sin, it's full of wickedness. Our hands are just not clean, Yisra'ya. And that is why it's difficult for us as a nation and a people to literally lift up clean hands. He said that Yahshua, he made prayer. He made tefillat with great supplication, with supplication, with great crying and great tears. We don't even operate that way today, do we? We don't even operate that way today, do we? That's not even in our, in our action, our activities before Yah, is it? Uh, we don't even operate that way, do we? And that's just the truth, Yisra'ya. See, this is what the Torah does. It shows us what things uh, must be fixed. It shows us where we have gone far astray uh, from the direct the path of Yah. It shows us the things that must be brought back in alignment uh, with Almighty Yah. Because the farther we go, the farther we get away. Then the farther we get away, the farther he is from our mind. And the farther he is from our mind, then the less time we spend with him. And we look at ourselves and examine our own bosom to see how clean we are. See how much time you spend with him. See how much energy you put in with Yah. See how much time you spend with Yah. Oh, people can't do things. You can sit at the dining hall table and flip open the book and do things. That doesn't mean a damn thing. You're just reading. That's all you're doing. So I'm laying the book open and looking at each one of those words because everything, it's, it, will, it will be impactual. It will make an impact in our lives. Yes, Lord, yeah. I'm not saying don't sit there and read, read all you want to. Hallelujah. But we must spend time when we love someone fervently, uh, it is like someone that's writing a poem. They take time, their heart is into the poem, isn't it? And when the poem comes out there, you may die, you think that poems have to rhyme, but no, that's the way, that's the way that I was brought up. But it's this, it is the fervent sincerity of the poem uh, and the message and the words and how that it ties uh, and it brings us to this one conclusion. It begins, what it begins with, it ends with the same thing. That's what a poem is. If it begins with the fervor of love, it ends with that. And it expressed throughout the whole context of that. And that's what Yah tried to express to us. And the enemy has removed us away from the Torah. Yahshua is the one that offer up the offer. He is a Kohan. We don't have to go yearly. We go every second, every day. Come on, keep ourselves cleansed, Yisra'ya. 
And then once you began to operate like that, you it's not difficult to lift up clean hands. You will know your hands are clean. They are unspotted from sin and blood. But when we allow ourselves to be enamored with sin because we are unclean, with our own foolish ways and our wickedness and our thoughts and our ideas, it's because our minds are not being developed by the Torah of Almighty Yah. It's been developed by a sin, wicked nature. And it is represented in our physical being. We can see that. You can look upon each of us and we can see that. Yes, right. Hallelujah. We must be cleansed by the word of Yah. We must constantly uh, bathe our mind in the Torah of Yah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We must constantly let that be our appetite. Yeah. This was, must drive our appetite. Yeah. It can be folly. It can be foolishness and sin, Yisrael. Yeah. It can be laughter and play. As the time for a little laughter, we, the time we're in is a time of soberness and, and mourning. We're past the laughter stage. Most of us here are getting older. So you don't have time for the laughter stage. It's time that you, be, you, you should be sober and vigilant. And diligent in your efforts about the business of yarn. You're not getting younger. You're getting older. Your body doesn't even respond like a young individual. It's time for us to be sober in all of our attempts before Yah. And as long as we allow the enemy to keep us out of the Torah of Yah, we will never develop the senses of a fervent love for Yah. And that's why we can't love each other. We will never develop that fervency of his Ahab in our bosom. If you don't love to understand him, and the only way you're going to do that is by the, is by the attention unto the Torah of Yah, then you will never develop the kind of mindset that it takes, Yisra'ya. We will always be warped. We will always be twisted. You will never love him. We will say we do, but we don't. Because this book will always reflect what's in us. That's the purpose of it, to reflect and to show and to make shafat, to make judgment. It always does that. It's something wrong with us that we can go and, and slumber and sleep and knowing that we have aught in our bosom against Yab of all things, against our neighbors. If something is wrong. And it doesn't trouble us if we go to sleep that we see the Torah will show us what to do. It will show us what things we must do. And how to get that right. To, to have this fervent love for, for Yisra'ya. It must be a fervent love. It must be a love that when one sees you or one touches you, they cherish that moment. That's what a fervent love is. You tell me if y'all came down in the midst and we know it's him, uh, he touched you, you will not cherish that moment. Uh, it's like a little kid meeting a basketball player. They, they cherish that moment for the rest of their lives. Uh, they will tell their children and their children's children, uh, they talk about that. You don't talk about y'all because you don't cherish the moment with him. Uh, that's what the fervency of his love is. Uh, that's what, that's what Kabat is. Uh, it is the moment that you cherish. It is love that you cherish. It's a love that keep you sparkling and, and keep your light on. When a daughter of eyes has been touched by the beauty of love, it keeps you sparkling eyes. Come on, Yisra'ya. When a man knows that he has a woman that loves him, it keeps life in the man. He's invigorated. He has life. Come on. It's the fervency of love. It cleanses you, make your mind sincere. You don't want to do anything to offend your spouse, you don't want to do that, Yisrael. Yeah. We have not known love. We have not known the cleansing power of Almighty Yah. Yeah. Because we've been pretenders. Yes. That's why they killed Evan Norby, the prophet. They killed them. Yes. Because he always warned them. We don't want nobody to warn us and show us where we were wrong. Yes. We need to understand that. Yes. You examine yourself every day, all during the day. When there's a moment you examine yourself by this you talk on this because it examines you and shows you where you are falling neglect in the ways of Yah it is like the the, the issue saying to the issue you just don't love me anymore you don't tell me you love me the woman wants to hear that you got to tell her I love you the man needs to hear that even though he's staunching his ways he needs to hear that and then his love is represented by his action, his attitude. Not because uh, you think you can get in bed or just think because you're a woman or a man. That doesn't constitute love. You know, John called me some of the hypocrites. If you're listening, you can, you can disperse this too. They do listen, all right. And he called me the other day and he said, he said, Riyak, Pastor, I need a wife. I said, boy, silly as you are. Get out of the way from me, you know. 
you got a sister down there that I can marry. I said, oh, Sister Katara already spoken for. I know for you. He said, I don't care if they're 30, 35, he said, even 40. He said, because they're not as immature as girls my age. Well, he just doesn't realize. The women at 30, 35, hell, they're more silly than girls at 24. They're still silly and immature. Because they get set in their wicked, stupid ways. They think they know everything. They can't listen to a damn That's the truth. They can't listen to a damn thing. They're more silly. I say, boy, stop it. I say, you got a fat head. Oh, no, I got a fat head. I said, no, 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 no. That's not what I mean in the physical sense. You got a fat head, boy. You understand. Those are some of, some of the most difficult ones. 35, 40, 45, because they think they've experienced everything about life. They know everything about every nothing. Silly things, sit down. I will. No, when a man finds a woman, he finds an excellent thing of Yah. He has favor. He has favor of Yah. When a man has favor of Yah, he can walk in the light. He's strong. He, come on. Even his walk is upbeat. I'm going to talk like this for us. And those that listen and those that will hear, I'm not going to stop. You still like, yeah. I'm not going to stop. I don't care. I don't care about no emotions being offended and little feelings. I don't care about that. I don't care at all. I don't care one bit. He made us to be examples before his house. He made the man to be an example before men. And I'm going to be an example. He made you daughters of Tizoyon to be an example. To teach. Not as much with your verbiage as your action and what you do. And that's a fact. Hell, you can talk, but it doesn't mean anything if there's no power, no impact there. Oh, man. Same thing with a man. You talk all you want to. That's no emphasis. Nothing of no value. The proof is in the pudding. It's there. It's visible. It's seen. I love you. Oh, don't tell me that. Hallelujah. The fervency. The fervency of us loving Yah, it will show in our actions, uh, in the commandments, how we obey. And the commandments always, uh, the process of his mitzvah, his ordinance, uh, it is the cleanser. It shows us our depravity, how far we've gone, and it causes us to rise up from that. Uh, the same word that cleanses us and judges us, it is the same word that exalts us. Come on, Yisrael, Yah. He has given us the power, the testimony of Yahshua, Hamashiach, his Adoth. We need that today. We need some men today. We need strong men today. We need some men of strength that are fortified. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And even their walk makes a statement. Yes. Oh, yes. Now that's a fact. Yeah. That is a fact, my yeah. young friend. It's a fact. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Look at the Nobi Yeshaya. I want you to hear this quickly. Isaiah chapter 1. I want to show you where the cleansing process begins here, Yisraya. Yeshaya, Isaiah chapter 1, verse 16. This is the admonishment that Yah speaks to us tonight, all right? This is what he says in Isaiah chapter 1, Yeshaya 1, 16. Yah says, I want you to rachatz. He said, wash, doesn't he? Yes. Wash you. So when you wash, you wash every part, don't you? That is what yachatz is, every part. When he say wash, he means every part. You wash your head, your ears, your buttock, your face, between your toes. He said, I want you to wash. I want you to rachatz. You. And Yah says, I want you to make yourself, when I began to research this word, He said, I want you to make yourself clean. And that is Zaha. And that is something not that is transparent, but it is translucent. That it ought to shine. When we wash ourselves, this is what it says. I do the research on the words because I'm ignorant. I want to know my heart will not allow me to just overpass words. And so I will dig into the depths of the Hebraic or, or the trying to find it in the dig. I, I will do that, Israel. This is what he says. I want you to hear this. So we will know we are washed and cleansed. He's speaking to the house of Israel. He says, I want you to rahatz. I want you to wash every part, the whole, everything. You just don't take a bath and wash your feet. You don't take a bath and just wash your hands. 
But you don't know how to you wash every part. Even the extreme parts, you find a way to get there. So there are things that we have hidden in the extremity of our minds. It must come out. He said, Rahatz, Rahatz, I want you to wash you. And Yah says, I did. He didn't say, I want you to make yourself Tahor, a Taha. He says, I want you to make yourself Zacha. I want you to become translucent. I want the light, the Edu, the testimony of Yahshua to shine through. Yeah. That is what translucent is. Transparent, you can see right through you, right through you. He said, I want you to be translucent. Do you understand that? Can I read that again, Zachin? He says to Israel, I want you to wash you and to make yourself Zachar to be translucent. He said, put away evil or put away the evil of your doing from before my eyes and cease to do evil. We're not translucent. We have not washed ourselves in the Torah. He said, I want you to be translucent. Yeah. Zakah. Yeah. Wash yeah, yeah. yourself. Wash every part. Get up in your nose too. Yeah. That's the first thing I wash in the morning, my nose. I really do. The first thing I do in the morning, I wash out my nose. Before I wash my face, I wash my nose. I wash up in my nostril. I do. I always do that. I always wash my nose. Every morning. You get stuff up in there. I wash it. Lubricate it. And I clean it. That's what I do. He said, wash yourself, Yisrael. Yahshua said, you're cleansed. You're washed. You're made pure. By the power of Torah that I speak in the life of the Ruach of Yah. Wash yourself, you must do this. You began with washing, with Rahats. And then you make yourself Zacha, translucent. Translucent. You're translucent when you walk in the mist, you shine. That's what it is. I don't care how you feel, then you pick your walk up and you pep it up. You understand? You walk like a dead man, dead woman. This is what it says. I'm not saying this. Yah says, I want you to wash you, the whole part. Make yourself zakha. I want you to be translucent. Translucent. And if you look at the word translucent in your dictionary, it will tell you that it is shines and there's a brightness throughout. That's what it is. It's translucent. Now we can look at ourselves and say we shine now. Yeah. Oh, y'all's going to find us out. We, he's going yeah. to find us out. You, you can't get by this. Yeah. You can try to all you want to. You can speak of yourself, but he said wash yourself and make yourself clean. I want you to be translucent. I want you to reflect the testimony of Yeshua. I want your life to reflect that, Yisrael. Yeah. And then he said, I want you to put away the evil of your doing. Your own doing, your own evil ways. You got evil ways. You're corrupt. He said, you put away the evil of your doing. Before, from before my eyes. And he said, I want you to cease to do evil. Then he tells you this, Yisrael, in the next verse. He said, I want you to lomad. I want you to learn to be trained. I want you to be taught. Loma, learn to do well. To do your time. We have not learned to do well. We have not learned to do well. We don't know. We have not learned to do well with one another. This damn wicked nation is falling. Let nobody kid you. Japan, I was reading out of uh, Giliana, Revelation eleven eighteen 18 today. And how Yah said, I'm going to destroy them. The nations that destroy this earth. And what happened in that nation? It is, even the little child, as she looks at the picture, she says, Wow. Ooh, papi. Wow. Look at Papa, you see that? Wow! They said to my Isha, it was snowing there today in a region where they, this tremendous thing. Don't think that this nation, we have sown wickedly. 
Israel, you better begin to wash yourself. I'm telling you, you wash, but it's in dirty, your own dirty sin water. That's a fact. You wash that way. I don't want to bathe after someone's water. Throw it out, give me some fresh water. I don't want to bathe that way. That's a fact. And we've been bathing in the same filth, the same dirt of our mind, the same corruption. And y'all say, put away. I want you to put away your damn wickedness. Your dirty damn attitude, your wicked ways. Your damn self-righteousness. We're coming to the time where we're going to be examined. And those that are not, you, we will find out. I don't care where they are. Those that will join us, those that will participate. If they participate in a true assembly, they will, you will find out what, what the end shall be. He said, I want you to wash yourself. He said, we must begin to wash. How about the word? You bathe yourself in, the, in that cutting word of Yah. That's how you cleanse yourself. You began to wash. This is what the prophet says to us, the Nobi. Wash yourself. Yah says, uh, wash yourself, Yisrael. Yeah, and make yourself uh, zakha clean, uh, translucent, uh, that you shine with the glowing uh, all through you. Hell, we don't glow. Yeah. 